everyone, it's good to be with you. My name is Julianne Stans and I'm Director of Parish Life and Evangelization for the Diocese of Green Bay. As you can tell from my accent, I am not a native Wisconsinite. I am from Ireland. And so today we're going to break open some of St. Patrick's legends and traditions and myths surrounding him. So let's talk a little bit about who St. Patrick is. You know, for all the celebrations that we have around the world on St. Patrick's Day, March 17th, remarkably little is known in the way of St. Patrick's life. But growing up in Ireland, you have the opportunity to see the places where St. Patrick walked and wandered all over the country, and you start to get a sense of this man. So let's start with what we do know about him. Maywin Suckett. That is a very unusual name that you have to say very carefully. Maywin Suckett is actually St. Patrick's real name, or his given name. He was born in Roman Britain, we're not exactly sure where, around the year 387, so in the 4th century. So when Patrick was 16, he was cruelly kidnapped by pirates and taken to Ireland. Um, the mountain St. Patrick is traditionally associated with is a, is a mountain called Slamish, which is in County Antrim. And there St. Patrick endured cruel beatings, abuse, where he tended the pigs for a man named Milku, who was his slave master. St. Patrick woke up with visions of God saying to him, Holy boy, what are you doing? Do you know me? And so St. Patrick himself tells us in his confessio, or his confessions, that he started to convert his life to Jesus Christ. He started to pray unceasingly every day, and he tells us in his writings that he would pray as much as 100 prayers a day, and even as many at night. One night he was woken from a dream and the Lord said to him, go travel 200 miles away to the coast and make your way back home. And so St. Patrick set out, traveled 200 miles, at least the legend tells us, boarded a ship and went back home to Britain. Now you can imagine how his family must have, have rejoiced after having Patrick been away for so long. But Patrick felt the Lord call him again. And so he went to Europe to study to become a priest. And around the age of 40, we're told, he went back to be a bishop to the Irish. So the man who was enslaved by the Irish goes back to set them free from their pagan ways. It's an incredible story. Little things about St. Patrick become very significant. His father, for example, is named as a Roman priest. His mother, Conchessa, was a relative of St. Martin de Tours. So you hear in St. Patrick's life this legacy of faith, even as a child, and, and he tells us himself he rejected that faith until he was much older. Now here are some things that I think are very interesting about St. Patrick's life. There is no legend of the snakes. Ireland has never had snakes, and so the, the legend of St. Patrick banishing all the snakes from Ireland definitely doesn't exist. Instead, the snakes are seen as a metaphor for the pagan beliefs that St. Patrick drove out from Ireland. Now the second thing that you might know about St. Patrick is his shamrock, right? And the shamrock, or the shamrock in Gaelic, um, is associated with three very distinctive beliefs. Faith is coming from your mind, belief is coming from your heart, and then trust is coming from your soul. And so using the shamrock, St. Patrick was able to bring body, mind, soul, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit together. We have two sources of writings about St. Patrick. The first I mentioned was his Confessio or his Confessions. And the second, it's not very well known, but it's called The Letter to King Caroticus, where St. Patrick actually condemns slavery because he, of course, himself had lived the life of a slave. And in fact, many, many patrician scholars tell us that St. Patrick may have been one of the first recorded people in history to condemn slavery. So there's a lot for us to unpack in St. Patrick's life. If I was to leave you with what St. Patrick's legacy might be, I would say a couple of things. He was a man of deep prayer and devotion to God. He prayed unceasingly and gave thanks abundantly for all that God had done in his life. Many patrician scholars, those are scholars of St. Patrick, often describe Patrick as the man of one book, and that book was the Bible. St. Patrick quoted it all the time. You can hear him admonish people, kind of give out, a little grouchy, but he did it all with love and he did it through the scriptures. The last thing about St. Patrick that I've always loved is his unbelievable appreciation and love for the natural world, the landscape that's around us, which conveys a sense of God's holy mercy and love. And one of my favorite prayers that I want to share with you today 
is attributed to St. Patrick, but was written a couple of centuries after his death. And it's known as the Larica. And one of my favorite translations of the Larica begins as follows. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. By the rowan and the briar, by the raging forest fire, by the sky that's lightning torn, by the moon that's newly born, I bind my feeble soul to thee, Almighty Son and Spirit Three. Amen. Name the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Of course, why do we have St. Patrick's Day? That is the anniversary of St. Patrick's death. So I wish for all of you to have a wonderful St. Patrick's Day. God bless you and uh, Slán August which means goodbye and God bless.